Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this bullet blood trail inspired by the movie Wanted. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So this is the shot from the movie that we are gonna reference. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend, super fun movie. If you'd like to get the 3D model of the bullet, I found it on 3D Ocean for $7. But also if you have some basic 3D modeling skills, you can make this pretty easily. Alright, so after you import the model, it consists of a few parts and I want to control all of it with just one master parent object. So I'll just make a box here. Um, right click, object properties, make it not renderable and display as box. I want to click align and align this box to the bullet. So I'll just say center, center. And then I want to select everything. Hold Alt and deselect the box so that just the bullet is selected. And then click on select and link and link all the bullet parts to the box. So this is just a quick and easy way to have all of the bullet parts controlled with just this one object. And we still need to go under hierarchy effective but only center to object. So now the pivot is in the center of the bullet and we can rotate it along its axis. So now we can just select the box, um, enable auto key, go to frame 150, move this forward a bit and hit A on your keyboard to enable the angle snap and rotate it 360 degrees this way. Make a key just to be sure and you should end up with something like this. The end key, I want to be smooth because I want it to sort of slowly come to a stop like this, so that's perfect. But the beginning key on frame zero, I want that to be linear. So just select that, open the curve editor and make it a linear key, right? So if I just sort of put my camera in place here, I want the bullet to end maybe in the corner. So you can just do control C to make a camera and we need to move the target to where the bullet is so we can rotate around the bullet. Go to target and just move the target back to where the bullet is. So now what will happen is the bullet comes into frame. It comes to a stop on frame 150. Again, enable auto key on frame 150 for the camera and then go to frame, let's say 250, um, set this to local axis and just move the camera a little bit this way and maybe we can move it even more so something like this and also move it closer to the bullet all right so if i play it back you should have something like this if you're following the tutorial bullet comes in comes to a stop and camera rotates trying to get exactly what i did over here so with this set up we can do the tie flow portion now so again create tie flow and I want to do a birth operator and give birth to 200 particles on frame zero. So position object, let me just select this one, hold control and select this one and add selected. Let's set the display to large dots and make them yellow. So our particles are on top of these objects, but we need to bind them to it because they're not moving along with it. They just stay there. So object bind. Again, add selected for the two helix parts and lock to surface. So now as the bullet is moving, those yellow particles are staying stuck. So now to add the trail, I'll add a spawn operator and I want to spawn by travel distance every five centimeters to maybe just 5% um, of all the particles and give it to offspring with a variation of 50%. And we need to send this into a new event. I'll set the display to large dots and make them red. Here we go. So we have a basic trail being created, um, but it's super uniform. It's like a perfect line. And I want to add some randomness to it because we're going to add the time measure and we need this blood to look random and not just like a perfect line. So to break that up, we can add a spread operator here, right? So you can see what that does. If I turn it off, it's perfectly straight. If I turn it on, um, it adds this random spread to the particles. But in order for the time measure to mesh this nicely, we're gonna need a bit more particles. So I'll just add one more spawn operator here. This time we can just leave it on entry and maybe we can give birth to three particles and I'll just copy the spread so 
hold shift, move that into a new event and you can copy the display as well and maybe set the color to like green just to differentiate and connect that to the spawn. So we have a lot more randomly placed particles creating this nice trail which we're gonna use in a bit. All right, so at this point in the tutorial, we have the main trails taken care of, but to make it more interesting, I also want to add these smaller blood drops. So I also wanna add two different time measures. One time measure is gonna be a bit thicker and the other one will be a bit thinner for these smaller drops. So we need a second type flow here. So I'll actually just um, disable this type flow, select it and hold shift and just make a copy of this one. And you can see that Type Flow 2 has appeared up here, so I can just switch to Type Flow 2. I only want to give birth to about 70 particles instead of 200. Um, let's enable the flow. But I want these particles to spread out further, so we need to give them some speed. So let's add a speed operator. And for now, we can disable the second spawn. Right. So right now, what's happening is they're being born and they just have a random speed in 3D space, so they just spread out. So we want them to spread out to about here and then stop. So first, actually, I'll just add a slow operator to slow them down and set that to 50%. And let's enable this spawn just so we can see what's happening, right? So we have those green particles still moving. I'll set the spawn amount to maybe just 70% with eight offspring. I'm basically creating these like bubbles of particles and this will give us these sort of chunks of blood in the air and let's set the variation to 50%. So this is good, we're almost there, but they just keep flying away. So we need to stop them after a few frames. So I'll just add the stop operator and set the timing to particle H. Now you can just drag this number higher and higher until you like what you're getting. So I think I did something like 40 frames for mine, right? So this is basically what I'm getting right now. I'm just make sure you copy the stop operator into this event as well. So just hold shift and paste it in here so that the red particles stop moving also. Okay, so we'll make sure that the type flow one is now enabled before we add the time measure, which we can do under create standard type flow time measure. And for our time measure one, I want to add our type flow one. And you can just turn off the display for all these dots so they're not in our way. Right, so if you've been following my channel, we've used time measure before. Just generate sort of blobs based on your particles, but it does give you some filtering options to make this nicer. So I'll just make the radius um, two centimeters, make the voxel size 0.9 centimeters. And for the filtering, I'll just do Gaussian, which will smooth it out like this. Now the whole thing is still a bit too thick, so you can just add a tie push modifier and you can set the amount to something negative like minus 0.3, but you need to uncheck use vertex selection so it's actually working, right? So you're just reducing the thickness of this. And if you don't necessarily like um, what you're getting, you can always just go back into tie flow position object and you can play with the seat to get some unique results. So I'll just clicking, you know, reseed until I get um, sort of a blood trail that I like. So maybe something like this. I like how broken up it is. And remember, you can always just reduce the amount of particles if you feel like you have too much or too little. Um, to make this even nicer, we can add a tie relax modifier, maybe set the amount to one. So this just helps smooth out any sort of sharp edges or polygons. And as a final, final touch, we can, of course, turbo smooth it just like we've been doing in my cloth tutorial. So let's just add a turbo smooth. And that just adds that final layer of smoothness to the blood. So now let's do the second time measure for the smaller blood drops. So again, create another time measure. So for our time measure O2, we're going to pick type flow O2. Maybe I'll set the radius to just one centimeter and you can play with the voxel size to control how big the blood drops end up being. So I think I'll just do 1.5. Yeah, I kind of like that. That looks like a good amount of small blood drops around. 
And we can also do the tie relax and turbo smooth again. Okay, I'm looking at the preview and I think that I would like these drops to be a bit larger. So I'll just set the voxel size to one centimeter. All right, so at this point you can add your blood material. This is the one that I'm using. You can pause the video, look at my settings, or you can also just open the V-Ray material library browser, go under liquid, and there is a blood preset material. So that's what I used to start with. And then I just modified the colors a little bit to get a darker blot. So I'll just apply this to my time measures, both of them. And I will unhide my lights. So I just added these four lights, pretty simple. And if I enable the V-Ray frame buffer, you should be getting something like this. I think there's a bit too much blot compared to my original example. So what you would do is just go back and reduce the amount of particles a little bit, but it will also look different with the shallow depth of field and the lighting and everything. So this is good, but it's not reflecting the city in the metal bullet. So I want to show you that as well. So the quickest, easiest way is just to go on Google and find some image of a city skyline like this. And I color corrected it orange straight in After Effects. And you can just export and import it into 3ds Max. And then you'll just go into your V-Ray settings under environment, reflection, and you can just drag this um, V-Ray bitmap of the city image directly into the reflection slot. So now if you run the VFB again, you can see that the image is now being reflected in anything that's reflective in the scene. Uh, so when I rendered out my bullet, it just looked like this. And of course, I just added some, you know, basic curves and some hue and saturation for contrast for the blood, but nothing major here. And then for the background, this was basically just um, the image moving in the back. So what you can do inside of 3ds Max is you can actually just make a sphere, make a pretty big sphere. You can do Alt X so it's see through and move it roughly in the middle of the bullet like this. And you can maybe give it 64 segments, make it an editable poly, select polygon, do control A to select all the polygons and flip because we actually want the polygons to be facing inwards because that's where the background is, is inside of the sphere. And you can just create a new V-Ray light material. So I'll just go under standard V-Ray light material. And for the map, it will be your orange city image again. So I'll just go select bitmap, select the color corrected city image and apply that to the sphere. So now this is what I'm getting in the frame buffer, right? It's just the city looks a bit huge. So you can just set the tiling to maybe two on both U and V or maybe 1.5, right? This is where you just have to play with it a little bit to get it to look um, just the way you want. You can also rotate the sphere so you get the buildings where you want them. And you can basically just rotate the sphere as if you're rotating an HDRI sky, right? And you can just rotate this until you get the city background to look um, just the way you want, right? So I just rendered the background separately and I just blurred it with um, this camera lens blur effect. And then I just, you know, did the bullet and added them on top of each other and you end up with something like this where I have the background separate, the bullet separate and you can also do shallow depth of field and 3ds Max on the bullet. I have a tutorial on my channel on how to set up shallow depth of field so you can see that the blot is actually getting out of focus the further back it is. So it's something that you can do as a final touch. And before I forget, one more thing that I did is that I retimed the whole thing. So as you can see, it comes in super fast into the frame and then it sort of slows down. It gives it that sort of a matrix feel, like the bullet is super fast and then you enter bullet time and now it's slow. But actually when I rendered it out of 3ds Max, it all moves at this very slow speed the whole time. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to be able to control um, the retime later, right? So I'm very much against slowing things down in After Effects because you can always tell, but you can usually get away with speeding things up and then just playing the rest of it at 
the regular speed, which is what's happening here. So you can just right click and say time and enable time remapping. And then you just need to find the point that you want to retime. So for me, it's basically somewhere here where the bullet stops. So I'll just make another keyframe here. And then I want to select the last keyframe and the second one. So shift and you just want to drag this forward, right? So you basically compressed the first half of it and the second half of it is still playing at um, real time speed that you rendered it out at. So if I preview what this looks like, you get that super fast first 20 frames, which really used to be around 100 frames and the rest of it is just real time speed. So you get this sort of a ramp effect, which is exactly how I got this preview out. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a lot. We covered some tie flow setup, some time measure, some rendering techniques with V-Ray. If you enjoyed this, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I'll be uploading more, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.